So hey, folks, it's so nice to be here with so many of you that are not at all scary. This is going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm the chief product officer within Bloom. Uh, what do we do? We are a not-for-profit interoperability services company that serves school districts in K-12 across the US. Uh, you might say to yourself, that sounds interesting. Why would they need one of those? And it focuses on this central question that folks in schools all over the country ask themselves every single day. How are my students doing? And what should we do next to help them succeed? Parents ask this, teachers ask this, principals ask this, district leaders ask this, governors ask this, everyone does. We ask this ourselves. And it makes sense that we're here, we're thinking about academic performance, non-cognitive performance, tenacity, grit, all of these great behaviors that we expect our students to demonstrate, that we expect our students to really kind of master in order to succeed. But this is a really hard question to answer. And it makes sense that school districts are investing in different technology applications, data-driven tools um, from all sorts of great providers, many of whom are in this room. And these are just examples, tools for parents, tools for teachers, tools for students themselves, to help answer that central question. There's been a ton of innovation in our space and in our community over the last several years. And that's really fantastic. We celebrate that innovation. There's a challenge here, though, that says, once you buy one of these great tools, as a school district, do you have the enterprise architecture to plug it in? In most cases, the answer is no. And that leaves us in two kind of nightmarish scenarios. One is from the perspective of the teacher or the user themselves. They're lucky enough that they have all of these great tools, but they all have different usernames and passwords. They all understand different things about how the students are doing. And so we hear these presentations that teachers make that say, well, I go to this great website, print everything out, run to the printer, put it in a binder. And then I go to this great website, print everything out, run to the printer, go to the binder. And folks will say, like, would you like to see my data closet? And we go, oh my. Um, the other nightmare scenario we find ourselves in is from the district IT administration perspective. That's the district IT administrator crying in the corner. Because every time one of these new great applications comes out, a contract gets put on our desk and says, great, we're going to implement this now. And all of those applications need the same information about which kids have they done in the past, who teaches them, who's allowed to see their information, uh, how schools roll up to districts, roll up to states. You'd be shocked at how many people can have a fight about what is the definition of a school every time one of these projects come up. Wouldn't it be better? if from a user perspective, you could have an ease of access to a set of great modules from all sorts of providers, and that the results from one module could inform the results from another without having to do a lot of downloading or printing or pivot tables yourself as an elementary school teacher. And wouldn't it be better from an IT perspective if you could get access to a secure multi-tenant data cert secure multi-tenant data store, and a publicly available set of metadata about where great content is all across the internet. And then make the, that information available to the applications you prefer through a non-proprietary set of APIs. That's what Imbloom does. Where you find us today is moving from like a very carefully incubated project to a real startup. And so thanks for your help in that. And we're really excited to talk to this community about moving forward uh, from this point on. We came to OSCON last year. We did a session. We got to work with Danny Hillis for, on his keynote, which was fantastic. And we promised we'd get to open source. We'd get from kind of clear documentation and transparency to actual getting in the clear. And we are nearly there. We brought with us to OSCON at a hackathon Monday and Tuesday the set of our code for our content services and we'll be fully in the clear by the end of the third quarter. We're really excited about this because that gets us a lot of things and also allows us to offer to you guys a lot of things. We get to offer our expertise about working with kids and teachers, our expertise on this kind of enterprise that we're trying to transform a little bit with your help, and we get from you your enthusiasm, your expertise, and my favorite thing that I've gotten so far from the open source community, from my new friend at SpringSource, was my new favorite internet name of RoboCup on a unicorn. <laughs> Super excited about it. Did a lot of searching. I'm trying not to just recreate this print myself. We need your help. This is just one silly example of the kind of creativity, enthusiasm, and collaboration we can share together. And clearly, as not the tech guy, it's the silly one that I'm going to be very excited about. 
Uh, we need help writing our stories, reviewing our, reviewing our stories, reviewing our processes, uh, and we need developers. Come look at our code, help us make it better. Thank you. There are a couple of ways we can start to do that starting right now. So we had a great code-a-thon Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we published our code on GitHub. We published our stories on Jira. You can come tell us what we're doing wrong and how to make it better at sessions today at 11.30 a.m. and tomorrow at 10.40 a.m. So great to see you. So psyched to be a part of this community. Thank you very much.